Big Bad John comes in to keep us updated on everything that's going on. John, thanks for joining us. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for, for sticking in, especially after that great interview. Do appreciate it. Yeah, that yeah. was fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, John, amazing. we're going to start off with a little bit of drama tonight between the Black Vault's John Greenwald and scientist Eric Davis. This is turning into a real social media fisticuffs, man. Yeah, it, this this is just... Uh... This is it's a really frustrating one and it's frustrating at so many levels because, you know, um, with, you know, much respect to John Greenwald for his research and so forth. But um, he's very different online than he is in person. And there's something about his style that um, I don't know. It just, uh, you know, it, for some reason, it just seems to push people's buttons, certain people, just certain people, just some kind of a personality clash. And um and essentially, you know, this this has been building between John and, and uh, John Greenwald and Eric Davis for a while. It's been a couple of years um, of essentially, you know, uh, Eric Davis coming out and, you know, releasing as, as much information as he can without being arrested. And and John Greenwald basically coming out and saying that, you know, because he can't show evidence for it, that he shouldn't be trusted and that you shouldn't believe him. And um, and, you know, the, the problem is, is it. Um, and, and this is, this is a little hard for me to describe, but basically for, for people, for people that I, that I've always known, like Eric and I, I have several friends that, you know, I have one friend in particular that is, is at Eric's level of intelligence and, um, and, you know, tend to have this kind of personality. They, they have such a personal aversion to fear, to, to fear, to, to lying, um, that they have such a personal aversion to dishonesty that they'll often harm themselves by being too honest. Um, they'll, they'll offend people. They will say the wrong things at certain times. They will um, harm themselves because of their honesty. And so for a lot of them to be accused of dishonesty is a real third rail. It's a real trigger point that will really set them off. And that's essentially what happened. And um, Eric Davis's response to, to the situation was uh, way overboard. It was uncalled for. It was... Um, it was a bit vulgar. Um, you know, it was, it was, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't clean play by any means. However, it was not done on Twitter. It was done in a private chat organization, you know, a private chat room, like, you know, like several of the ones that you and I are involved in that are usually kept, you know, like, you know, kind of, you don't speak what's about what's said. And, um, and John Greenwald is in that group. So we don't know what dialogue was going on between John and Eric, you know, Greenwald and, and, and Davis before this explosion. Um, it's not totally clear to me exactly why it was shared the way it was. But um, unfortunately, especially because Eric Davis is not on Twitter, um, it's now being put out on Twitter. And now John Greenwald is kind of using it as a, as a way to say, you know, look, look what a, you know, look what a nasty guy this is. Look, you know, look, you look how he's treating me, blah, blah, blah. And the last thing I will say about this, because everyone should read it on their own, do their own research, is I've gotten into several debates about this with people over the last 24 hours. And I've noticed an interesting pattern. And that is that the first couple exchanges are about what Davis wrote. And then that falls away. And what ends up happening is a long, drawn out debate where they're basically trying to prove that Eric Davis isn't, isn't telling the truth. And what you come to find is that most of the people who are, are upset about this on Twitter are actually people that have never believed Eric Davis. They've never liked Eric Davis. They've always thought he was full of it. And they're looking at this as an opportunity to go after him. And in every single conversation I've, I've had in the last 24 hours, every single one, the last 75% of the debate has all been them trying to convince me that Eric Davis has never, ever told the truth. And it's not been about his response. And so this is essentially a proxy war. This is what's going on. This is like, you know, America and Russia basically trying to get into a fight by using, you know, North and South Korea. Um, this is what's going on. People are basically using this case as, an, as a reason to go after Davis because they right. already felt that way about him. And we should we should actually make a point on this. This is all over the Wilson documents. And, yes. you know, in reading the point, I, I thought it was it was pretty harsh. Both sides calling each other a liar. Uh, Eric Davis getting into a disease that that uh, Greenwald suffers from. 
I mean, this is personal. It's it ugly. is ugly. The the gloves are off. They're at, ugly. They are at center ice throwing punches here. And, you know, let's just hope, you know, I mean, this is the type of situation that could really turn into a brawl on social media. So if you're into UFO drama, this is the one to get to. Let's move on here for a little bit. And, you know, it, it, I thought this was just a matter of time here, my friend, but it's happened. The Galileo Project with Avi Loeb has added Luis Elizondo and Chris Mellon. Now, I'm going to be blunt here for a second. I you did? No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm not sure if I think this is a good move or not. Part of me thinks it's fantastic. Yeah. The other part of me says, you know what? We're adding a lot of controversial people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even though I'm a fan of Elizondo and I'm a fan of Chris Mellon, they're still controversial in this subject. Mm -hmm. And to me, I have a tough time wondering what they can bring to the Galileo project, which was billed as a, as a venture for the scientific community, not the conspiratorial government side of the community. What's your thoughts here, John? No, I, I think you bring up some really good points, Dave. Um, and, and, but what I will add to that is that one, you know, I, I don't know how much of it's gotten to the general public, but there's been a lot of, of, of complaining and and concern about some of the other people that have joined the, the the group, and and essentially one could argue this is a counterbalance to someone like you know uh, you know uh, uh, Seth Toshak um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly um, yeah so, um, it, you know adding him um, you know some of the other people that have been added so you could you could argue this is a balancing of some sort so that's one way you could look at it um, you know I I think that in many ways they are a better addition. If you look at the controversial editions, the, these this is a better one from one point of view, and that is that um, within their within that organization, they didn't they didn't really have anyone that was was into you know you know the 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 UFO UAP side of things, right? And so now they have people that can essentially get them and share with them information that is going to help them, you know, really look at this and, and perhaps filter out or, um, you know, or, or, um, or, or really, sorry, hold on a second. Let me reconnect here. Um, uh, can really, um, you know, help them filter out and help them deal with, um, with these, um, uh, you know, with, with just with all the issues. I mean, the, the basically someone who can be a lot more, that's really odd. Sorry, bear with me here. Um, you know, basically, you know, be able to, you know, add that expertise, add that, um, you know, add that knowledge that they weren't going to have. And so I, I think from that point of view, it's 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 potentially a really good thing and and could add a lot of value. But I agree that, um, you know, it's it's very challenging that um, that, um, you know, all these controversial people are being added. This one, though, I mean, this is where it gets political. Yes, Chris Mellon brings deep pockets, but he's not spending his own money on this project. We already know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We already know that Avi Loeb has raised almost $20 million for this project. And I believe with Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon, there's a good opportunity that more money could be raised and be more of a financial, uh, a financial benefit, but Which is good because what Avi wants to raise is a hundred million. But I don't think either of them bring anything to the scientific field of study. Personally, yes. Personally, yes. But but they but they have access to scientists that that the Galileo project did not currently have access to. And so they can bring them things like signal information, um, uh, frequency information, um, uh, you know, field range, uh, uh, frequency types, um, field types that, you know, 
uh, one of the things Lou Elizondo said is that there are ways to track these objects that are far simpler and far cheaper than most of us realize. And if he's that, able right. to share that with, with Galileo, then it gives him an opportunity to either A, look for those things, or B, filter them out and look for, you know, the astronomical things that, they're, that they want to look for. Here's my thing, though, John. Okay, and I, and, and I believe you, and I think you're bringing up very solid points as per usual. But from a public's perspective, Lou Elizondo has a great reputation from the public perspective. Maybe not in the UFO community, but on a mainstream media community, this yes. guy is Teflon. Yep. yep. Whether we want to hear that or not, I think we For can. Now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But, you know, my excitement with Avi Loeb at the Galileo Project was that this was going to be something where members of the, like, members of the SCU the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, was going to get together and really, really make something happen here outside of the secrets of the United States government. And now we're bringing in Spook 1 and Spook 2, along with, you know, never mind some of the other controversial ads to this team. And I'm finding it all of a sudden really, really hard to endorse. I really am. Now... Now, yeah, no, I, I see that. Different than the TTSA, we have legitimacy here. You don't get a job as a as an astronomer for Harvard if you're a dumb guy or a controversial guy. You know what I'm saying? No, you gotta, no, no. You, you, gotta, you might become one later, but but you don't start out that way. <laughs> no, and I agree with you. You know, but I was really, really hoping that that Loeb would take a a different approach. I don't think he's done a lot of homework on some of the people he has added through his associates as well as his team. And I think this step just brought it a lot closer to government than maybe what a lot of us had hoped for. We wanted that anti-government study. We really did want that anti-government yes. study and adding Elizondo and Mellon to this team brings the government spooks right to the doorstep. And that's what I'm uncomfortable with. No, and and that, and that makes sense. But the last thing I will add is is the fact that the whole one well, of the whole point of this is to build detective equipment that is not owned by the government, and you know they're coming on as as research affiliates, and so this does give them an opportunity to to hopefully, and I'm I'm being trying I'm being optimistic here is hopefully share with them what they can do to their gear to pick up what the military equipment is picking up but doing it in an open platform. And so that that's the ideal scenario. And so hopefully something like that happens. But I agree with you, there's a lot of risk. Although I have to admit, as far as controversy is concerned, I don't know what would be more controversial, adding those two or adding the people from adding the SCU. Um, I, you know, I, don't, I don't really know which one would cause more problems for them. All right. Finally tonight, as we only got about a minute and a half here, NASA requests feedback for better ways to announce discovery of life outside of our planet yeah i i you know i almost didn't put this one in there because i was like i don't know what i'm gonna say i don't you know it's kind of like the whole if you, if you, if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything nice at all you know hey, um, I, <laughs> may i i i know exactly what we should, do here. we should bring in chris mellon and lou elizondo to help them out too <laughs> i mean they're everywhere already Hold on, I let know. me get my desk, see if Ellis is doing. I know, I know. It's just, it's just and, and and I mean, look from from one point of view, right? From one point of view, you know, uh, you know, maybe this is one small little piece of NASA thinking to themselves, "Oh, bugger, we might actually have to announce aliens sometime soon." Hmm, maybe we should get feedback from the public for that one. And and they never consulted the PR department, and so they came out on their own. I, you know, I I, <laughs> I have no idea, but this one caught me off guard. This was like a, huh? You know, like what? Like, I can't be reading that right. I mean, it's like, yeah, this is, um, yeah. And in a world where NASA hadn't been hiding a bunch of stuff, this would be like a, this would be a prudent thing for them to do. But in light of all that we know, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is pretty weird. This is pretty weird. Well, I mean, asking the, how about we just, uh, you know, announce it? Why do we need a game plan? Why can't we just say, hey, 
We found microbial life on Mars, like we have. Because you, you only got one chance. You want to do it right, you know? You want to, well, you know? Well, don't do it <laughs> the NFL halftime show because they've been terrible the last 20 years. Don't take advice with the, from them. With, the, with the Jets flying over. <laughs> or, or you add Elizondo and Mellon to your team because they need more projects for their resumes. John? Oh, yeah. Elizondo up there with Beyonce on the stage would be awesome. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we're out of here, buddy. Talk to you in a couple of Thank you, of sir. <laughs>